Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Weston Racing. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a thematic set of five Hot Wheels cars dedicated to Marvel's freakazoids known as the X-Men. It's hilarious to me. I was just talking about this with my boss, that uh, in the world of the Marvel Universe, you have the Avengers, and all of those are praised and loved by the people, but the X-Men, oh no. F freaks. Absolute freaks. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so we got five cars we're going to look at in today's video. I'm going to be honest talking about the cars themselves. I've never... Okay, let's get a couple things across here because there's a couple things that need to be talked about here. X-Men. Never really been a fan of the X-Men. They have never been something that I would honestly go out of my way to watch the movie-wise. I've just never been a fan of the X-Men. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Awesome. I, I can get behind Hugh Jackman as Wolverine any day. It is great. Love it. But like Magneto, Jean Grey, Cyclops, uh, Dr. X, all that, never been a fan of that. That has never been anything I've been interested in. But uh, yeah, today we're going to look at the Hot Wheels cars dedicated to the X-Men. It's really interesting because these came out last year. And this year we had Deadpool versus, or Deadpool and Wolverine, which was a fantastic film. Uh, so that happened. Also... I know that Wolverine is a part of the X-Men, but isn't there, like, another Wolverine copycat guy that's a part of the X-Men? Isn't his name, like, Beast or something? He's blue? I, I vaguely... Or am I think Is that the Fantastic Four? I don't think that's the Fantastic Four, because Fantastic Four was the, the woman that could turn invisible, the flamethrower guy, the rock guy, and stretch Mr. Fantastic Stretch Boy. I don't know. I... I my knowledge of the Marvel Universe is limited to two things. The very few movies that I've seen and the Lego video games. And even then, that's not a lot of knowledge. So let's just get into it. I know a lot more about DC Comics than I do the Marvel Universe. Even, even if Transformers are technically connected to the Marvel Universe, I still know more about the DC Universe. And that's because the DC Universe has Batman. And Batman is the GOAT. So, yeah, that's my stance on that. You can tell I always, uh, you could tell who I was as a kid based on my favorite superheroes. I never liked, my favorite superheroes are the ones that don't have superpowers or just really smart guys. Like literally my favorite, my, my favorite superhero from DC is Batman and my favorite superhero from Marvel was Iron Man until Disney killed him off. But yeah, Black Panther's the same way. I like Black Panther a lot and he really doesn't have a superpower. It's just his suit that gives him his abilities, but I don't know. It's just, just the way I like. And then you got people like X-Men or like Wolverine here, which is our first vehicle, the Sand Blaster with Wolverine. I like Wolverine. I think he's cool with, you know, his regeneration abilities. Kind of the same reason why I like Deadpool. I like his regeneration abilities. Uh, and Deadpool is technically invincible. So is Wolverine technically. But, you know, it's just cool. I, I like the different superheroes ideas. I've always, I've always thought superheroes were really interesting. But... At the same time, it gets to a point where it's just like, okay, yeah, superheroes are cool, but I really don't understand why people rave so much about certain superheroes. Like Spider-Man? Spider-Man's cool, but I never got the hype behind Spider-Man. It never made any sense to me. He's just, a, he's just a teenager that can shoot webs out of his arms in various different ways, depending on which actor you're watching play the Spider-Man. But yeah, I just, I never understood that. Is it because he's a teenager in high school? And that's like the main demographic for Marvel movies as teenagers. Is that like, is that why the hype is there? I really don't know. And even then, the Sony Spider-Man movies are 10 times better than anything Disney has cooked up. And that is an opinion I will take to my grave. Take to my Logan grave. So a Ryan Reynolds will dance in sync on top of me. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Doing Hot Wheels as a hobby for pretty much your entire existence on this planet really starts to do things to your brain. I don't know if that should be studied by doctors, but it might need to be because it's starting to get a little weird over on my end of things. Anyways, here we go. This is Sand Blaster with Wolverine. Easily my favorite vehicle in the set just because all of the vehicles in the set are like cars. And this is the only truck. And of course, the only truck in the entire set is this massive behemoth of a vehicle. So yeah, you got a blue body, a almost like a that almost looks like a brown, like a brown colored chassis with glitter in it almost. Black tires with yellow rims and a yellow window insert. It really does 
grab that Wolverine vibe, just the color scheme does. I think what would have done it better is if they would have done a yellow body with blue window inserts and rims. I think that would have looked a lot better, but then it, when you put Wolverine on the side of the vehicle, it would have blended in a lot more. I don't know. I don't think that would have worked, but yeah, that is uh, that is the Wolverine vehicle there. Marvel X-Men, pretty cool. I really do like this casting, and surprisingly, I just realized this. I'm going to be, in my next video, I'm literally doing five packs, and the same exact casting is in there the uh, sandblaster so that's hilarious um i'll make sure to bring that up when i record that video too so that way if you guys go from this video to that one you can see the connection there and then you will realize that i do record these one after the other so yeah there you go that is the sandblaster right there the first vehicle that is a heavy casting by the way like that casting is solid as you would imagine it is rock solid all right next up number two of five is the mst suzuka with gene gray um, yeah, I don't know anything about Jean Grey, really. Like, like I said, I really don't know much about the characters. I don't, I don't even know what her ability is, if I'm being honest. I genuinely don't know what her, like, freakazoid ability is. All I know is that she's the female character from the X-Men, the main female. She's got a Japanese-style car that's meant to look like a Nissan, I think it's a modified Nissan Skyline? Maybe? I don't know. She's got a Japanese-themed car here. It's black, whatever. I, I, I genuinely don't know much about Jean Grey. Heck, even... I'm trying to think back to the LEGO games, because like I said, all of my knowledge of the Marvel Universe mainly comes from the LEGO games. And even then, I can't even remember her being in the LEGO games. I know she was, because there was an X-Men level, but like, I genuinely don't remember her being there. So yeah, here we go. Let's do this one next. I don't think this car has any secrety secrets on it, but yeah. So here we go. Here's Jean Grey's car right here. We got a black body, a blue chassis, black tires with uh, uh, yellow rims. That's what I was going for. And a red uh, window insert. I do like the red window insert because it does mimic the crystal in her head or whatever that is. Is that one of the Infinity Stones? No, that was the other guy that had the Infinity Stone in his head. You see, see, my knowledge of the Marvel Universe is right, showing very, very clearly right now. The back end here, I love this paint color. This black is so black that it blends in with like the tires. It is, that is shockingly black. That is nice. I love that color so much. This is one of those cars though, that if you left it out in the sun for too long and went to pick it up, you would, you'd get DQ grill marks on your fingers, but yeah, so Jean Grey right there, everybody. That is the car here. I, what I always find interesting about these cars is they put the copyright Marvel on this side of the vehicle, so that way when you buy the car, you can't see it. I find that absolutely hilarious. Yeah. So there you go. That is Jean Grey, the MST Suzuka. I think it's meant to be a play on if Suzuki made cars. Maybe, I don't know. That's just a hypothesis. Again, much of what I'm doing in this video is hypothesis because I have no idea what I'm talking about. Number three of five is the 57 Chevy for Cyclops. Now, Cyclops, I know Cyclops. He can shoot lasers out of his eyes. That's what makes him so cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's his whole thing. Anyway, let's open it. Um, yeah, this is an interesting car here. I, I find it really weird because all of the cars in today's video are uh, fantasy vehicles except this one. I don't know why they just did that. They, for some reason, decided that the uh, this one was not a, a fantasy vehicle. They wanted this one to be a legit vehicle for some reason. Maybe it has connections to the universe. I have no idea. Like I said, I don't know anything about Marvel. Then again, you know what the other thing I was just thinking about? Is the MST Suzuka a real vehicle? Like, is it like the, uh, the LB Super Silhouette of the whatever the Suzuka is? For those of you who don't know, the... Uh, Liberty Walk L, the Liberty Walk LB Super Silhouette Nissan Skyline Sylvia is a Hot Wheels car that came out. That is the name of the casting, by the way. That's not even the full name of the casting. I left a piece off of it. That's a name of a Hot Wheels casting. And what it is, is it is a super heavily modified version of a Nissan Skyline Sylvia. That's all it is. But it's its own casting, and it's a very sought-after casting, too. If you want to buy the uh, the original black version, or the black version that came out in 2023, I have it, and I will be selling it on my Whatnot next Friday. Click the link in the description. Anyways, here we go. What am I doing? I zoomed out the wrong way. Here is the Cyclops here. My, pl my point is, and what I was trying to get to there, is I think the, the MST Suzuka, uh, that might be a real car. Maybe. I don't know. 
But yeah, so here's Cyclops here. I like the look. I've always, okay, maybe it's just because I'm a sucker for Bel Airs, but I do like the look of this car. And I like the fact that Cyclops has two different poses on each side. I don't think the other characters had that. Here's Jean Grey. No, Jean Grey is the same on both sides. Wolverine. Oh no, Wolverine is different on the other side. Let me look at Jean Grey again. I, I might be wrong here. Okay, so she's pointing to that side of her head. Okay, it is different. Slightly, just barely. So yeah, here's Cyclops here. We got a yellow body, a black chassis, almost like a black chassis, navy blue chassis almost, almost like an indigo color. Black tires with red rims and red windows. I like I said, the red windows for the laser, get the gazer beam thingy. That's a character from The Incredibles. Uh, yeah, it's great. I like this one a lot. This is probably my second favorite car in the set. I just, I really like how simple this is. And it's a Bel Air. Well, you can't go wrong with a Bel Air. Bel Airs are fantastic. But yeah, there you go. The 57 Chevy for Cyclops right there. It's our third car for today's video. This disaster of a video. All right, here we go. Back to the fantasy stuff. Number four of five is the Cove Light with Mr. X. Professor X. I think I called it, I've called him Dr. X, Professor X, and Mr. X. That is, I'm, I'm reaching new levels of insanity over here. But yeah, this is the guy who can talk to people to, telepathically, right? That's his whole gimmick, I think. Uh, and the other, the, the he's in a wheelchair. I remember that too. He, he's in the wheelchair. Or the floating chair. No, who was in the floating chair? That was uh, Modoc. I don't know how I got those two confused, but yeah. Again, th like I said, this really shows you my knowledge. It's very, very, very limited. It's like I know the characters, I know the locations, I know the the uh, I know the characters, I know the locations, I know the superpowers. I just don't know how they're all connected to one another. Because like I can be like, yeah, there's a character with a floating chair, but then I just don't know who the character is. I know of Modoc's existence. I just forget who. Uh, I just forget that it's him that has the floating chair. But then again, that's also kind of hard to forget because the guy who voiced Ratatouille did <laughs> played Modoc in that weird claymation show that they did. All right, here we go. Here is Professor X. This is the Cove Light right here. Pretty neat car. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a neat car. Actually, it's it's a strange car. I don't know. We've got a weird enamel white body with a black chassis oh man oh it's a track stars vehicle this is built for your racetracks people black tires with green emeraldy rims and a white oh god yellow window insert professor x on the side there let's see if he changes oh he does change positions on this one look at that or change poses on this one that's cool car car <laughs> carpal right uh marvel right there professor x x-men yeah leader of the x-men i'm pretty sure is what he is Again, I'm going to need somebody to like create a list of all of the claims that I've made in today's video and fact check them for me to see if I'm right in the comments. Don't actually do that. That's a waste of time. But like I somebody should go through and fact check this because I genuinely believe none of what I'm saying right now is actually true. But yeah, there you go. That's the cove like there. Not a huge fan of this one. This is probably my second, probably my second least favorite vehicle right there. If we're going in order, I think Wolverine is my favorite so far, Cyclops second favorite, Jean Grey third favorite, Professor X fourth favorite, and then my least favorite in this entire set is number five of five, Sir Ominous with Magneto. Um, I do know Magneto. Magneto, Magneto, his name pretty much says what he does. He can just magnetize things and move them with his mind. Because I remember in the one movie that he was in, he picked up an entire bridge and turned it towards an island so he could walk over to it the most excessive thing I've ever seen in my entire life but for the sake of the movie it was cool all right Sir Ominous by the way as a here here's my knowledge right Hot Wheels cars right Sir Ominous as a Hot Wheels casting I've never been a fan of this casting I don't it's kind of like the Cove Light I've never really been a fan of the casting so yeah here we go this is Sir Ominous with Magneto we got a really cool dark purple body with a black chassis, black tires with a red rims, and a uh, smoke uh, tinted window insert. I'm trying to go away from saying smoked windows to tinted windows, but I'm not succeeding. Does he change positions? Yes, he does change poses on each side of the vehicle. Magneto, X-Men, does say X-Men up top. You got all the really cool red detailing on this one. 
all the purple, and that is pretty much it. Like this one I would say is pretty basic compared to all the other ones. I don't know why, but I feel like this casting would work really well for like Zerg from Buzz Lightyear, that Lightyear movie. I'm surprised they didn't use this casting for Zerg. They did use Highway Hauler 2, I think it was, which is a massive semi truck as Zergs, but I feel like this would have fit a lot better for him. Anyway, there you go. That is Magneto. Let me uh, pull all the cars back onto screen here. Mr. X, Professor X, my bad. I don't know why I keep doing that. Cyclops right there, really cool one. We got Jean Grey right there, really cool one as well. And then we've got, of course, Wolverine, the best one. But yeah, there you go, everybody. Those are the X-Men cars for 2023 from Hot Wheels. From left to right, we've got the Sandblaster, the MST Suzuka, the 57 Chevy, the Cove Light, and Sir Ominous. So yeah, whether you're a fan of the X-Men or Marvel, you're probably going to want this set. Or if you're like me and you just collect Hot Wheels cars, maybe because you're a fan of Sandblaster and the 57 Chevy, you also want to pick this set up as well. I know... Uh, I know specifically like the 57 Chevy, I know people specifically collect that casting. So there are some, excuse me, there are some people out there who probably bought just the 57 Chevy from this set. Excuse me, just for that casting. But you know, at the end of the day, oh my God, what is happening to me? <laughs> um, at the end of the day, it's an okay set. Would I go out of my way? If I was a kid in a store, would I go out of my way to buy this set? I wouldn't, because I'm not a fan of the X-Men. However, as a collector now, and as somebody who does like uh, the different cars, like, okay, maybe if it was me now and I wasn't a collector, I was just looking to buy a couple cars, I would probably buy Wolverine and Cyclops and that's it. The rest of those I probably wouldn't care about. But as a collector, I bought the whole set to bring you the YouTube video. You're welcome. I'm the best, and you need to leave a like on this video to prove that. Ugh. All right. Yeah, that's it. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Oh, that's my old intro. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you, and good night.